On a three-year outlook basis, I continue to think that telecom is one of the best sectors along with healthcare at this point of time. So I would say that, you know, rather than have a large cap versus mid cap debate, I would say that it is very imperative for investors to focus on asset allocation and not to think that equity is the only asset class. All right. Uh, as you can see, live visuals, Mr. Ram De Agrawal is making his way to our studios. Uh, that's a very, very uh, well-decorated office uh, where we're celebrating our eighth anniversary. It's uh, a reason for a lot of joy because uh, we've had our viewers support us uh, through this entire journey. And it's great to have seen that kind of uh, uh, you know, commitment from our viewers and uh, to the kind of news reporting that we believe in and that we have been uh, presenting uh, for the last uh, well, eight years. So we're going to be completing a decade in two. Yes, but it's absolutely. been it's been such a such a rewarding journey. A rewarding and memorable one at that. And you know, hopefully we won't have Nikunj and Ajay hogging Ramdeo Agarwal because he is making his way right into our studios to sit beside Tanvir and give us his outlook on the markets. And you know, while we may have had a journey of eight years, eight years young, let's talk to him about his journey. And he spent three decades in the markets, Ajay. Well, that's correct. Look, uh, who's in the house uh, to celebrate our eighth anniversary? Our be one of the best, uh, most favorite contributors on the channel, Mr. Ramdev Agarwal. Sir, thank you very much for joining us today. No, no, congratulations on your eighth anniversary. And uh, the channel is going to go, uh, you know, from strength to strength. Well, channel is going from strength to strength, but all because of uh, best wishes and contribution from experts like you. So before we talk markets and all the boring stuff which we usually do, let's talk about... Uh, uh, which is your favorite anchor on the channel? You've been, you know, coming on the channel for eight years, but I'm sure you must have developed fondness about any one particular anchor. No, I think the oldest I remember is Nikunj only, you know. So Nikunj is one guy clearly. And uh, I think many other channels, uh, you're talking about independent channel, isn't it? Yeah, on, channel. on our channel. On your channel, of course, Nikunj. So Nikunj is your favorite anchor. What about uh, among the female anchors, who's your favorite? Ah, I don't know anybody's name. So I can see some faces, but uh, I think Aisha is there, no, in, with you. So she's again oldest uh, kind of thing. Yes. So I remember these two, uh, you know. All right, great. Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, clearly she's also one of our senior most anchors among the women. Okay, uh, before I hand it over to my colleagues in the studios, I would like to understand uh, what is your the moment you've been coming on the channel on budget occasions on special days like this. Uh, we have done s s several special programs at your premises. What is one uh, moment which you really remember? interacting with our colleagues in the reporting side, anchoring side. One moment of your association with ET now for such a long time. Hmm. I think uh, very recently we did this buffer trail. So there, uh, I mean, actually the buffer trail was over. I mean, as far as I was concerned, I had left from Omaha to Toronto. And then I got a mail from Tanvir. Yeah, Tanvir. Her name is Tanvir. So she said uh, she got that big interview. And that day I was not there. I think it was Sunday. So Sunday I was already in Toronto and I felt so happy for her and for the channel right. and uh, we could uh, make it, you know, I was pushing her very hard that don't take no for no and uh, keep pushing for it and si finally you have a press corp uh, invitation, yeah. they'll definitely accommodate you. Right, that's correct. It was a very special moment for Bhutia Loswal and Ichi now and of course for Tanvi uh, who actually backed not only that historic uh, interview but also because it was on an Indian channel. With that I'd, I'll hand it over to Tanvi and uh, uh, Avan sitting in the studios where Mr. Ramdev will be joining in for much longer chat in a, his association with our channel for eight years in moments from now. About the boring stuff on the market. Ajay, we may come, you know, bread and butter from that coverage. <laughs> but yeah, thanks very much. We'll be waiting uh, for Mr. Agrawal to join us uh, in moments. Uh, yeah, we will talk about the Warren Buffett interview yeah, as well with Mr. Agarwal and his outlook on the markets. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk about his outlook on the markets, his favorite quotes, his gurus that he looks up to as well as where the markets are headed. Stay with us.
back with market sense and he has made his way into our studio the distinguished stock market investor ramdev agarwal who is with us and i want to start off by talking about that very memorable trip that both of you had meeting the oracle of omaha and you managed to get that 1 dollar bill signed by warren yeah, buffett as yes. well tell us a little bit about some of your key takeaways as well from that meet while proudly showing off your 1 dollar bill Yes. Which is not worth a dollar. I think right. you could just hold it up for the yeah. camera. Yeah. They could zoom so in. This Can is, this, this camera is the biggest zoom takeaway. Yeah. Yeah. This is the biggest takeaway. Biggest for takeaway. Me. <laughs> Because I have been learning from him for last 25 years, uh, yeah. 20, 23 years now. Yeah. And uh, this is I mean, a bill signed by dollar bill signed by Warren Buffett. That's yes. Warren Buffett's and, uh, handwriting. Yes. <laughs> But uh, of course, I, I was not the person who got it done. It was yes. Tanvir. Thanks, Tanvir. Oh. And uh, so I especially after the interviews, like you know. please could be how you are blind quite he was very sweet okay. yes. he signed three uh, one uh, dollar bill and two rupee bills uh -huh. very sweet uh -huh. yeah so th that was your biggest takeaway from the warren buffett meet i'm sure <laughs> yeah but i think uh, this, this time uh, what he said about uh, uh, the uh, internet companies uh, that five top five companies in the world probably mm. uh, they're all Uh, I mean, almost two and a half trillion dollars. Ten uh, percent of American market doesn't use any capital. Times mm -hmm. have changed. Yeah. You know, so the whole uh, concept of capitalism, where you worship cap uh, capital and you focus on the productivity of capital, mm -hmm. since you don't need any capital, mm. where is the you know? True. So there is it's a different world, and India has not landed there. Mm -hmm. I think we are headed towards that, and at some point of time, I'm sure India will produce its own uh, set of uh, 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 this internet companies. Yeah, you, you know, and speaking all. of India, I was just going through some of the articles, and you've described Narendra Modi as a headmaster for for <laughs> India, but he but he's taking us places yes. really. So yes. so you know, from from a macroeconomic standpoint, how are you looking at the kind of progress that we made, the kind of reforms, various sectors such as infrastructure, yeah. banks as well, which has seen quite a bit of a thrust. Yeah. So uh, I think a uh, lot of this uh, what do you call leaderlessness, which was there, hmm. it's like a school where you don't have a. <laughs> headmaster or principal and then what happens the the whole classroom and everything goes in chaos mm. so i think it is a very chaotic country mm. even now right and all sorts of problems are there this npa i mean when when the boss is not there you know everything goes haywire mm. so i think some orderliness is coming and uh, in various aspects of it whether it is political social your uh, economic everything i mean there's so much of uh, work in progress mm. so i'm quite sure at some point of time uh, suddenly things start happening and uh, we are waiting for that day when uh, uh, india takes off i mean of course we are very stable growing at about 7 7% 7.5% mm. but when will that uh, you know great moment come that uh, we get into leap frog into 9% 10% and for a decade or so yeah. we grow at double digit or something like that so there is all kinds of preparation is on mm. and uh, i'm not an economist to figure out uh, <laughs> you know so I think still things are slow and earnings. Uh, I mean, I see. I'm a stock market guy, so I look at mm. from a stock market point of view. Right now, we still see earnings stuck four years back at 400 rupees for an S, N S uh, Nifty, mm. still around 400 only, plus minus 10, 15 bucks. So, I think uh, that moment is about to come. Uh, everybody is uh, yeah. hopeful, and that's why the what is happening is before the earnings explode, everybody wants. earnings to explode but i think uh, what is going to happen is first p will explode and then earnings will follow so uh, when you know when the p explosion happens you think we'll go well past 10000 are we preparing are we See, those things are base? yeah of course i mean we are very close to that it's not very far so uh, already well past 10000 almost becomes a base for us then everything will become base <laughs> i mean i have Mas seen this market going 300 that's times true. Yeah. That's from true. 100 sensex to uh, 30 31000 in my yeah. lifetime Yeah. So we are going to go to 10 uh, I mean 10000 nifty in very shortly mm -hmm. and even 1 lakh nifty also don't ask me time frame. Mm -hmm. So you know <laughs> this is all going to happen it just uh, you know if you took 15% compounding mm -hmm. you do your numbers I think it will come through. So you already become a billionaire in this market rally. Modi Lal was well the company the market, I, market yeah. has they had made me first billionaire in 2008 also uh -huh. for 15 days this time it looks <laughs> so this time share some of your pearls of wisdom to help us become like that I mean because you've also said that market is a friend of good stocks and an enemy of bad ones yes. so which are the good stocks that you like Yeah so <laughs> now this is a difficult question in the sense that see uh, Uh, what happens is that you end up buying lot of junk when i started my career in uh, uh, 87 87 we started motilal oswal i started buying stocks in 1980 
So till about 94, I used to think I'm a very smart guy. <laughs> and in my 10 crore portfolio, I had 200 stocks, more than 200 stocks. All sorts of junk were there. Mm -hmm. Some good stocks were also there. Then I took one, after I read Buffett first time, <laughs> I cleaned up the portfolio and I had only 15 stocks. That very year, my yeah. portfolio doubled. Oh, wow. wow. You know, so what happens is, uh, another thing is the power of compounding. Mm. Power of compounding works over a period of time. I mean, one year, 25%, second year, 56%, third year, double. Mm. 10 years, 10 times. Yeah. 20 years, 100, uh, 100 times. Mm. 30 years, 1,000 times. And it just happens. That's so uh, you have to allow that uh, lever of time and rate of growth when but uh, we are so impatient in the market that we we just plug the whatever fruits come very quickly in one year two years or just whenever it doubles people just take the profit mm -hmm. and they go out and that's why you see all the rich people in the world top hundred thousand guys they all made up one single stock mm -hmm. what they have built yeah. say like so today i mean in 30 years, 35 years, we have, we have made about what? Uh, personally, between me and my partner, I would have made about uh, uh, 12,300 crores for my uh, personal uh, savings. Mm -hmm. But actually, this 70, 18,000 crores, mm -hmm. we have built in Motilal That's true. So that is one single stock because we had no option to sell. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's how you, and we had also bad time. In 2003, we incurred loss for a year or two. Typically, if I had a public uh, market portfolio, I would have sold it. Mm -hmm. But today, uh, what is the value of the same thing? So, uh, holding on for a long period of time, a good company is most important. Is most important. <laughs> Buying good company is very important, mm -hmm. and holding it for a long time, both are important. Okay, so, so first, how does it feel to be a billionaire <laughs> in this market? Because you, really, I, as I you said, know? this is the second coming for uh, <laughs> as a billionaire. But a more sustainable one. Uh, looks like it yeah. all depends on what you guys uh, do. And how can investors who are watching you right now, uh -huh. especially given the fact that the domestic investors' profile and strength and dominance uh -huh. in the market has gone up yes. like a multifold yes. uh, over the course of the last two years? How can yeah. they aspire and make their dreams come true to become billionaires? If not billionaires, millionaires in the market. You know, the, actually, this market really allows you to be a billionaire. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you have to put your head down. Don't allow the billion to get into your head. Mm -hmm. Look at your net worth. <laughs> these are all market cap, not your net worth. So don't mix these two things. Mm -hmm. I mean, my net worth is only maybe 1,000, 1,200 crores, not even that much. Oh, I think yeah. just about that much. So you're so sweet. <laughs> yeah, so uh, it is not billion or anything like that. Yeah. So uh, because I, I cannot touch my billion. Yeah. It's all for... Uh, yeah, it's paper money. Uh, paper yeah. money, yeah. all paper money. <laughs> Uh, but uh, so, so real money. What would you say uh, to people who want to make real millions in the market? Yeah, so real billions in the market is that millions, first, uh, millions first come to the stock millions market. Uh, millions. Yeah. First come to the market. You mm -hmm. know, I mean, uh, most yeah. of the guys I meet uh, yesterday also I met so many of them in Bangalore and all. I mean, people are scared of the stock market. You know, I mean, yeah. they have a lot of savings. Uh, they one guy met. I mean, uh, he just buys fixed deposits. Mm, He's yeah. scared of that income tax officer will trouble him. For assessment or something like that. I said, no, you buy mutual fund, yeah. you buy stuff. Changing? Yeah, it's, it's changed completely, yeah. but he's in old shape. He's 73, 74. Okay, okay. So, uh, I mean, one has to uh, go out and figure out, uh, and you have to take the. I mean, you cannot l learn swimming unless you get into the water. Yes. You can keep watching YouTube and whatever tube you keep watching. You can't <laughs> learn swimming. So, you have to get into the water, mm -hmm. and uh, there'll be somebody to help you out, mm -hmm. and there are so many of them right now. And yes. uh, uh, are HFCs the area where people can really make the big bucks? Because we've seen how the housing finance companies, yeah. and you know, it's like just the entire gamut sir, and, and across you've been the board. An advocate of that space, yes. Right? So investing and investment management, these are two different things. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, when you start asking about sector and companies and all, then you are getting into the field of investment management. Okay. And there, as I say, stock picking is only one of the traits. You know, stock picking is not uh, the end of investing. Mm -hmm. Stock, you, you need to select a stock and allocate well. Mm -hmm. You, If I give you a good good idea and you buy 1% of your portfolio and I buy 20% of my portfolio, mm -hmm. the impact after two years when stock goes three or four times. Mm -hmm. See, what, why Mudala Oswal is uh, actually enriching me so much? Mm -hmm. Because my 100% of my net worth is into Mudala Oswal. Mm -hmm. Outsiders like you or somebody else in your channel who have some few shares, they're hardly half percent or one percent of their net worth would be in Mutal mm. So So stock has gone up equally for him as well as for me. Yeah. But my hundred percent is growing at that pace and his only one percent. So what is important is n not only buying the stock but how, how well you allocate. Mm. Yeah.
Yeah. And a large part of the allocation strategy is uh, mutual funds, right? That's that's where uh, people can, uh, through SIPs, yeah. systematically invest and get that diversification yeah. for play, to play in for returns over a long period of time. Yeah, so one is asset allocation within uh, your total net worth. So you want to invest, uh, uh, say, 100 rupees of yeah, that. Exactly. How much of that is in equity and how much is that in debt? That is the first fundamental question. How much should be? Give us an... Uh, yeah, so I have 100 percent in equities. <laughs> so that's not the right profile for everybody. Mm. But let them see their own. The younger people like you and all, they, you must have 110 percent in equities. <laughs> okay. Right. So I mean, like, everything should be in equity to start with. Because you have so much of time. Mm -hmm. Even if you lose out, after five years or seven years, you can again... I mean, it doesn't mm. set you back so much. But if you're, if you're right in equities, it can take you very far. Yeah. You know, that really sets the... Uh, for, lays the foundation for making big money. You start with few lakhs in, at the age of 25, 27, mm -hmm. and uh, in 10 years you are 20, 30 lakhs. Mm -hmm. Because, see, you can make a lot of money in stocks uh, only if you have some amount of capital to start with. Zero multiplied by anything is zero. So you've got to, you've got to have some capital to start with. And it takes a lot of time to build uh, yeah. the capital. Like, I started in 87 with zero capital. Mm -hmm. So the first struggle was how do you build few crores mm -hmm. on which you can apply your ideas, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah, and you know, you began in in, in 1987. Look where you are today. You were also, uh, you know, identified a stock like Infosys as the Y2K boom in 1998. Yeah. What's the tech story looking like right now in India? <laughs> I don't know. I think we have we had wonderful time. I mean, yeah. uh, Infosys is one of the largest wealth creator and fastest wealth creator. Yeah. I think the stock is up from 93 June. I think if I'm not wrong. Uh, it got listed about 50 crores, and today it is upwards of 2 lakh crores. So it is up some six, 7,000 times without including dividend, and there are many thousands of crores to yeah. be dis yet to be distributed, and annual profit is running into 12 to 15,000 crores, still growing. So I think it has been an amazing story, but you know that uh, the hyper growth story of last 20 years, every company goes through that tailwinded environment, uh, and uh, that environment, that phase of rapid growth of Indian uh, tech, mm. uh, particularly for the large companies. Mm. I it's think a mature is, sector. Yes, yeah, a mature. No, no, the sector is not that mature mm. as much as the... Individual companies. Individual companies. Enforces, so Infosys, is, yeah. Wipro, TCS, uh, all these companies, they have become very large. Mm. So on that base to fly at the rate of 50, 100 percent mm. is tough. But I'm quite sure a lot of e-commerce companies or uh, uh, technology companies mm. or uh, some, uh, I mean, a uh, little bit uh, digital technology, a uh, lot of new data analytics companies, yeah. uh, uh, artificial intelligence companies, those companies are yet to show up in the public market. Mm. Uh, they are there in the private space. Mm. So they can grow from, say, $100 million to uh, $10, $15 billion in the next 10 years. So mm. we have to watch out that space. Don't write off the sector. Uh, but uh, if you are a study, you know, dividend earner or uh, not looking for very rapid, I mean, we are looking for 25% kind of return from the portfolio. Yeah. But if you are looking for 12 15%, I think these stocks are very good. But so, you know, it's so ED now has completed eight years. Yes. We pretty much started, I remember, at the bottom of the global financial crisis. And yeah. you know, there was a lot of gloom and doom at that time. From yes. there, it's been a long journey. Uh -huh. uh, you know, it's been a long journey for you as well. But from these levels, sir, which yeah. is the big opportunity that you see? Because right now, the sound bites that we get on a daily basis is about banks. Mm. You know, clean up the banking sector, mm. get going with bank consolidation. Mm. We just had the deputy governor of RBI say, look, we are going to be going ahead with these mergers. We are going to try and go ahead with NPA resolution. Mm -hmm. Is there an opportunity there? Because the private banks have done well, HFCs have done well, PSU banks are underperforming. You know, it's like it's a, a very differentiated trade. Yeah. So any problem or disruption has a huge opportunity. The per, the the company or the business which is disrupted, they got go down the tube. The value migrates from those businesses to some other set of companies. Mm -hmm. So like uh, a services company in U.S. from Boston to Bangalore. Mm -hmm. So when all these infosys and all they grew, all the companies in U.S. services companies they went down. So in uh, uh, banking, till about 95, or till as late as, say, 2004 five, uh, it was dominated by public sector banks, state-owned banks. Mm -hmm. Now the value has migrated, a lot of value has migrated from state-owned banks to private sector banks. So the disruption in the banking system, uh, technological or uh, the ownership or entrepreneurship, that has moved to, you know, a lot of value is being created right now. Because economy is growing, it's a fa one of the, f the fastest growing economy. Uh, typically, the financial sector grows at two or two and a half x to the GDP of uh, 
the economy. So if Indian economy grows nominally at about 11, 12 percent, uh, the banking system per se will grow at about upwards of 20 percent. Okay. So that's a huge opportunity. And in that, the largest market share guy gives into smallest market share guy. Mm -hmm. So you see the opportunity and it's a decadal opportunity. It's not a True. one or two year opportunity. And that also opportunity is not for everybody. You need to execute very well. Within, just because you have a license or your private sector, that doesn't guarantee you that you will go to the heaven. Mm. You have to execute well, but it's a tailwinded environment for them. So a lot of very large companies like HDFC Bank, which got born in front of me in 95, 96. As your top holding as well. <laughs> yeah, so it's a four and a half lakh crore bank. It's a, literally threatening TCS to become number one. Yeah. Mm. Uh, and uh, in fact, TCS is growing at just about 8, 10, 12 percent, mm -hmm. whereas uh, HDFC Bank is growing at uh, closer to 20 percent. Mm -hmm. So I won't be surprised in next two, three years, uh, HDFC Bank emerges by far the largest company of India, mm -hmm. the second largest right now. Mm -hmm. uh, but in market cap sense, it could be a 10 lakh crore company by 2020 or 22. Right. Mr. Agarwal, just stay on with us yeah. uh, for two minutes. So we have a, a company representing the consumption theme in India that we also want to talk to you about. Yeah. Uh, Varun Berry, Managing Director of Britannia Industries, uh, joins us uh, with you know, his perspective on how business is shaping up. Uh, Varun, great to have you on the show. Britannia has managed to stay more or less resilient to all the factors plaguing the Indian consumer, uh, be it the demographics, rural issues, etc. In some cases, surpass the industry growth as well. What has aided you to you know, outperform the market? So our focus on execution, I think that's been the biggest win for us. We've, uh, you know, had an unwavered uh, focus on execution. We've just gone after the building blocks of the business. Uh, and not just me, it's just the entire organization which has got that manic, uh, you know, uh, focus on getting the small things done properly. And that's what helped us, uh, you know, beat, beat uh, category growth. Well, an afternoon, how do you think then that the Indian consumer has evolved over time? Do you think that the consumer has been uptrading for more premium products? Uh, you know, that's the market you have catered to primarily. I think the consumer today is uh, demanding variety. The Indian consumer is a very, very different consumer, whether it's an urban consumer or a rural consumer. They are looking for variety in everything that they consume and, uh, and hence what, what you see is that the repertoire of products that a consumer consumes today versus what it used to be let's say five years back is very very different it's much wider than what it used to be uh, the, the Indian consumer has always been very very value conscious but uh, clearly what's what's coming through is that today it's not just value consciousness they want all the bells and whistles but at a price which is very affordable so uh, you know the, the catering to the indian consumer is not an easy task you you really have to figure out uh, how do you provide everything that's required all the goodies but at a price which is uh, very very affordable and within you know the budget of an indian consumer Right. Uh, and Varun, you've guided for a 10% recovery in revenues in the next three to six months. What makes you so confident about keeping the growth mo momentum going? See, I think in an economy which is uh, slated to grow at 7 to 8% uh, in the long run, I see no reason why the categories which are emerging categories should not be growing faster than the GDP growth. So that gives me the confidence that uh, it still is an emerging economy. It still is an economy which is on the move. And hence it's very, very, uh, I think it's, I'm, I'm really sure that it, it's, it's only a matter of time before we start to clock the kind of numbers that we used to see five years back. Stay with us, uh, Mr. Berry, because I want to come across to you, Ram, there. You know, you're listening very intently to his interview and some of the comments that he is making. Uh, you know, the focus on execution, as he said, has been the biggest yes, win for yes. the company. And, and, and this space as a whole has done well. You abide by that. So what is the outlook of the consumption sector, according to you? I think consumption is going to explode. You know, I mean, uh, I mean it depends uh, how discretionary is the item. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about the growth momentum versus the valuation story, sir? See, one of the, that's the tricky part. Yeah, so one of the things which we are seeing is that uh, this GST is a very disruptive thing for 
uh, unorganized. Mm -hmm. I don't know how exactly, how much it will uh, disrupt and how much uh, uh, the uh, lot of spurious and other stuff uh, which were happening will move to, you know, a lot of things will get taxed. Mm -hmm. So, will there be a clear preference for the organized guys? Mm -hmm. In any case, they sell very good stuff, hygiene and everything. So, mm -hmm. uh, could there be a one or two years of uh, uh, good bump in the growth? Mm -hmm. Uh, if, if they keep doing 8, 9%, 10%, can it go to 14, 15% suddenly yeah. because of shift in the market share? Okay, yeah. that's going to be important. Yeah, and we should, we should question Mr. Berry on that as well with respect to, you know, GST uh, as well. Uh, you know, Mr. Berry, that 12% rate for one category, can you tell us about your pricing strategy? Because analysts say that you will need a 4% increase. Day. How will this rate really change your strategy? No, so it's not 12%. The GST rate is 18% uh, for biscuits. So 18% uh, is uh, a, a neutral rate uh, as, far as, as far as we are concerned. So uh, we are neither out of pocket uh, nor are we gaining anything from it. There will be a little bit of a fine tuning between the value portfolio and the you know, the, the, so basically products which were lower than 100 rupees a kilo versus products which were higher than 100 rupees a kilo. Uh, and believe me, we have a lot of products which are less than 100 rupees a kilo. So we have Mari, which is, you know, we have a dominant share in Mari, which is in certain regions is under 100 rupees a kilo. We've got 50-50, which is our, uh, you know, a, a, a premium brand, which, which is also in certain regions under 100 rupees a kilo. So we have products which are under 100 rupees a kilo and the entire uh, glucose range which is under 100. So uh, we have products which are under 100. There, there will be a little bit of a hit. Uh, we will have to fine tune the prices there, but there will be uh, you know, slight gains in uh, the other products. So that fine tuning will have to be done uh, to make sure that we uh, get that balance going. But more than that, uh, it's also going to be the inflation that we've got to look at. So we've kept the lid on prices uh, for some time because GST was coming and we wanted to make sure that we saw this through before we uh, adjusted for inflation. But as we go forward, we'll have to uh, start to look at that as well. Uh, but obviously we can't do it immediately. So in the next six to eight months, we will start to see how we counter inflation. Uh, and how do we f uh, fine tune uh, the, the effects of GST? All right, finally, Varuna, uh, ED now has completed eight years. How, are, how have you viewed your experience with the channel uh, that you watch consistently? First of all, congratulations on your anniversary. Um, how have I enjoyed working with you guys? <laughs> it's a very difficult question. You always put me on the spot, so you hardly let me enjoy it. But yeah, you, you, I, I enjoy your programs. You, you guys are pretty straightforward. You, you call, call a spade a spade, and that's what works. All right, Varun. Thanks very much uh, for taking out the time to speak with us and share with us your business outlook. Um, Mr. Akhbar, before we let you go as well, uh -huh. your experience last eight years. I know Ajay has already done the drill with you outside, uh -huh. but it's been such a great journey, uh, mm. and you've been part of it as well with the channel. Mm. So in eight years, you could reach Omaha. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, I mean, it takes time. Reach, you know, no, it takes time, you know, yeah. uh, to mature to say that, yes, we'll take the channel to, mm. I mean, it is a maturity for us as well as for uh, the channel that the only Indian channel. You remember mm. those uh, other guys, yeah. they were uh, wanting to take interview. Mm. I said, no, 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 we are going to do it with Indian channel. Yeah. Where, where is that team? Yeah. You know, I was looking yeah. for that. Actually, Actually, a, a couple of global networks were yeah. trying to get Mr. Agarwal to speak to them yeah, because... What a cool uh, you achieved. Right? Yeah. yeah, so it was a lot of fun. We went through that entire area. Yeah, uh, that entire you know? area. That was nice at Bosch Yes. But uh, Mr. Agarwal, you know, Warren Buffett was not so gung-ho about mutual funds and index funds um, in India. He, he was, of course, an advocate that if you want to invest for mm. a salaried professional, go for index funds. That's what he's been saying in the United States. Mm. That's what he advocated mm. for India mm. as well. Uh, but he's not gung-ho on the entire mm. mutual fund mm. and active fund management story. Uh, you are growing your business mm. there because there is ample opportunity that yeah. we see taking advantage of the inefficiencies that there are in the market to mm. outperform. Uh, what is your own advice to viewers tuning in? You know, you're a big fan falling out there. Mm. What would you advise them uh, to make the most of the markets up run? Yeah, so 
don't do uh, don't do investing yourself if you really don't know it it's very complicated now the competition is increasingly with the global peers local uh, professionals so earlier the competition was retail to retail so you mm -hmm. could you could make it very easily and earlier there was a lot of information arbitrage if you know few company guys you could get some inside info and make some money now it is no more so in the sense that in fact the insiders they themselves are scared there mm -hmm. is no insider quarter results are there every day anybody they are meeting they have to upload in the mm -hmm. system so there is hardly anything left for the insiders to really in cash on mm -hmm. so uh, i think uh, investing has become very competitive mm -hmm. and uh, if you are good yes you must do it but if you are not if you are not you do not have time you have a lot of money but you don't have that much time and uh, real uh, you know uh, uh, organization to do it please uh, you know take help professional help and uh, buy into uh, pms or mutual fund from well managed uh, you know uh, companies mm. and that's the way to go about it and watch it now and of course watch it <laughs> now and they will help you uh, decide few of these managers and uh, mm. and sometimes the stocks also your yeah, asset management company is done very well yes. uh, sagarwal you very bullish on mutual fund business yes yes this is just our start yeah i mean for a country with uh, uh, 150 lakh crores gdp Uh, 50 lakh crores of annual savings. Your total equity even is five and half lakh crores. Yeah. That should be the annual flow into the equities. Mm -hmm. So we are going to see, and that's happening now. Mm -hmm. uh, thankfully, uh, your real estate is somewhat flat or down. Yeah. Uh, your fixed deposits are five six percent. Gold has gone nowhere. For all the ladies also, they are looking at now uh, buying into uh, mutual funds or something yeah. else. So I think the entire attraction for the equity mm. is pretty high right now, and we are seeing the robust inflow. Okay, then we we'll let you yeah, know. Yeah, Mr. Agarwal, it's great to have you in the studios. Thanks very much sure. for taking out the time to be yeah, here. Thank you. And hopefully we can hop hog the next spot as your favorite anchors. Then. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Sir. Okay, and with that, it's completely time out right here on Market Sense, and we'll continue to have our Starcast lineup on ET now. Stay with us.